today we begin the ninth poem, The Tale of Custard the Dragon by Frederick Ogden Nash. Now this poem is a ballad, it's in a ballad form. What do you mean by a ballad form? Ballad, I mean B-A-L-L-A-D. What do you mean by a ballad form? A ballad form is a poem which is having a story in it. Generally, poems don't have stories. But when a poem has a story within, it is uh, a story is woven in the poem, it's called a ballad, right? So this is a ballad. Now, before we begin, let me tell you, this is a 14 stanza long poem. Don't get confused. It's a story. It's going to be fun. So don't worry. We have divided this into three modules. In the first module, you shall get the theme. You shall get the poem and the poetic devices that have been used in this poem, right? That's your part one. In part two, in the second module, what are you going to get? You are going to get the explanation, the hard words and the poetic devices of lines one to 32, right? You will have the entire set there. And in the third module, you shall have it from 33 to 62, uh, yeah, 62. Yeah, so you will have all your lines, the hard words in it, the explanation of the lines, as well as the poetic devices. So depending on which, what you want to know, what you want to read, according, you can see your module, right? So let's begin with the first one. So the tale of Custard the Dragon. So basically, Custard is the name of the dragon. Yeah, that's how it is. It's a very beautiful poem, really fascinating one. We have uh, Frederick Ogden Nash giving us a very beautiful poem. He was an American poet famous for his light verse. He was known as the producer of humorous poetry. So this is, poem is exactly the same. It's on those grounds. He received a Sarah Josepha Hale Award in 1964. So yeah, a good one. Now, let's see what is in store for us. So this poem presents themes such as appearance versus reality, hypocrisy, courage, love, and jealousy. It is covering all of these, right? The main theme of the poem is appearance versus reality. So basically, it's just like the words are telling you, appearance versus reality. What you appear, like we say, looks are deceptive. So what you appear may not be the case in real. Within you are a different person. Yes. So that is the theme in this. It's appearance versus reality. Here the creatures like the cat, mouse and dog appear as courageous. But in crisis, they reveal their real cowardice. In crisis, that means when the real situations turn up, when there is a very challenging situation in front of them, they become cowards. What do you mean by cowards? Buzdil. Yes? So this is how it is. This is how the poem is, uh, the story in the poem is based upon. In contrast, the ugly and formidable dragon who is in reality dangerous of them all appears as a coward creature. Now, if we look at the cat, the mouse and the dog and comparatively, the dragon is the most scariest creature, right? But here it's the opposite. Though we know he is a very scary creature, but he is a great coward. The dragon is a coward in this poem. But during the crisis, now when the challenging time came, he saves everyone. Now, he was a coward. They used to make fun of him. But then when actually, you know, uh, he was required for help, he did it. That's why it's appearance versus reality. So someone's appearance doesn't make the person powerful. No, definitely not. You stand up and you, you know, you wear those clothes and you show yourself as really strong and really steady. But then inside you're a coward, you're like, you're having the heart of a mouse. You know, you're way scary, you just want to run away. It is on how one reacts when impediments block the way and scare him. It is how you respond when you have a situation coming up. Now, situations don't take your permission. Situations don't make you save the date. They don't tell you when they are expected. 
they come up unexpectedly. That is the time it all depends how you face it, right? It all depends on your presence of mind at that point of time. And this is exactly what the dragon did. So let's see, we will know in our poem further. Don't you worry. And it's going to be great fun. So yeah, let's go through our poem. Now, like I told you, uh, it's the poem and uh, it is 14 stanzas and it has a story woven. So it's in going in sequence. And while I'm reading, what are you going to take care of? I'm sure by now you really remember you are going to take care of the rhyme scheme. And of course, as it's a simple story, you will know it while I'm reading. You can just visualize the story and we'll move on. So yeah, Belinda lived in a little white house with a little black kitten and a little gray mouse and a little yellow dog and a little red wagon and a real trulio little pet dragon. Wow, <laughs> sounds good. Now the name of the little black kitten was Ink and the little gray mouse, she called him Blink and the little yellow dog was sharp as mustard but the dragon was a coward and she called him Custard. Right? So that's Belinda and her pets. Right? Now uh, let's look at the rhyme scheme. We always look at the last words of every line to see if they are rhyming. Mouse, sorry, house, mouse, wagon, dragon, ink, blink, mustard, custard. They are. So it is A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D. So that is your rhyme scheme. Got it? Right? Okay. So you understood. Uh, we will be explaining them also further. So these are the animals of Belinda, her pets. And this is what she calls them. Ink, blink, mustard and custard. Easy to remember, aren't they? Custard the dragon had his sharp teeth and spikes on top of him and scales beneath, underneath. Mouth like a fireplace, chimney for a nose, and realio trulio daggers on his toes belinda was as brave as a barrel full of bears and ink and blink chased lions down the stairs mustard was as brave as a tiger in a rage but custard cried for a nice safe cage it's so well depicted it doesn't even really need an explanation Belinda tickled him. She tickled him unmerciful. Ink, blink and mustard, they rudely called him Percival. They all sat laughing in the little red wagon at the realio, trulio, cowardly dragon. Belinda giggled till she shook the house and blink said weak, which is giggling for a mouse. Ink and mustard rudely asked his age when custard cried, for a nice safe cage. Suddenly, suddenly they heard a nasty sound and mustard growled and they all looked around. Meowch cried Ink and Ooh cried Belinda for there was a pirate climbing in the window. Now that's just for rhyming. Window, that's window. Pistol in his left hand, pistol in his right and he held in his teeth a cutlass bright. His beard was black, one leg was wood. It was clear that the pirate meant no good. Belinda paled and she cried, help, help. But Mustard fled with a terrified yelp. Ink trickled down to the bottom of the household and little mouse blink strategically mouse hold. But up jumped Custard, the dragon. Up jumped Custard, snorting like an engine, clashed his tail like irons in a dungeon. With a clutter and a clank and a jangling squirm, he went at the pirate like a robin at a worm. So this is how he attacks the pirate. The pirate gaped at Belinda's dragon and gulped some grog from his pocket flagon. He fired two bullets, but they didn't hit and Custard gobbled him every bit. You know Custard, uh, Custard I'm saying. Yeah, the dragons eat humans. Belinda embraced him. Mustard licked him. No one moaned for his 
pirate victim. Ink and blink in glee did gyrate around the dragon that ate the pirate. But presently up spoke little dog mustard. I'd have been twice as brave if I hadn't been flustered. And up spoke ink and up spoke blink. We'd have been three times as brave, we think. And Custard said, I quite agree that everybody is braver than me. Belinda still lives in her little white house with her little black kitten and her little grey mouse and her little yellow dog and her little red wagon and her realio trulio little pet dragon. Belinda is as brave as a barrel full of bears and ink and bling chase lions down the stairs. Mustard is as brave as a tiger in a rage and custard keeps crying for a nice safe cage. So you see, they had the situation, they had the pirate, all of them were talking big. I'm this, I can do this, I'm as brave as a lion, I'm as brave as a tiger. And when the situation came, they all escaped and they left. So that was the time where dragon played the role, custard played the role. Beautiful poem, really fun. The story is interesting. So now, since we have such a long uh, poem, you know, uh, story in the form of a poem or poem in the form of a story. Anyways, uh, let's check the poetic devices that have been used. Okay, now I will go, I will read the definition only of those which we've not done pri uh, previously, but now I'm sure you know them all. So let's use the keywords instead. Now, if I talk of alliteration, come on, repetition of the first letter, generally a consonant. Please remember that. Alliteration is repetition of the first letter. Betty, butter, butter, the butter was too bitter. So, burr, burr, burr. That's alliteration. Anaphora, repeating the, uh, the, you know, the same word comes in new lines. Sequence of words at the beginning of the neighboring clauses. So, every line begins with the same word. That's anaphora. Metaphor, we know it is a word or a phrase which is actually representing something else, right? The adjectives have been shifted. Oxymoron is the use of two words with opposite meanings. You will understand better when we actually use them. Refrain. Now, this is a repetition of a sentence again and again. Now, if you realized uh, towards the end when I was reading, they were the same lines as they were in the first para. So that's refrain, okay? Repetition of a sentence again and again. Assonance, it is the vowel sound which is prominent throughout the line. Repetition is what? It is the repetition of the words. Please, alliteration is repetition of the first letter. Repetition is the repetition of the whole word, okay? That is two or more times. You also have imagery where you use your senses. So imagery, senses, imagination. You imagine the scene. The way it is given to you, you actually imagine that scene. Consonance is what? It, is re it refers to the repeated sound of consonants. Assonance was what? It was vowels. Consonance, it is produced by, uh, sorry. Consonance is produced by cons uh, the consonants. Personification, inanimate objects get the human qualities. That's when that thing has been personified. Similarly, we know it is a comparison of a person or a thing, but I mean, most importantly is the words like or as will be there by saying that the first is like the second, you know, similarly, similar. Like, so first is similar to the second. It is like the second. You will be using words uh, like or as in simile. Yeah. Onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia is the usage of sound words to create a dramatic effect. You know, meow, bow and all those things. So it's giving you the actual sound, you know, made by maybe the animals, maybe the creak of the door or the weak of the mouse. Yeah. Those are onomatopoeia. Yeah, so this, with this we come to the end of the poem, the theme and the poetic devices. In the next module, we shall get on to the explanations 
of lines 1 till 32. So see you in the next module. As mentioned earlier in the previous module, you are going to get the explanations of lines 1 to 32 in the second module. So let's move on. This is, these are our first two stanzas. Belinda lived in a little white house with a little black kitten and a little grey mouse and a little yellow dog and a little red wagon. What's a wagon? It's a four-wheeled uh, four vehicle for transporting commodities. You saw it in the previous uh, module, didn't you? Uh, it was there with the poem. And a realio, trulio, little pet dragon. Now, these are just to, you know, make it into a very poetic form. So, it means a real, it means true. So, actually a true, real dragon. Now, the name of the little black kitten was Ink. So, the kitten's name was Ink. The grey mouse she called Blink. And the little yellow dog was sharp as mustard. You know mustard, a yellow plant. Yeah, uh, Mustard seeds, if you say, that's rye. But there is a mustard plant and it's really sharp. You know, the taste is pungent sort of. And uh, but the dragon was a coward and she called him custard. Coward is a weak person who runs away from... You know, everything. Oh my God, not this. Oh my God. Never, you know, ever ready to go ahead. Yeah. So uh, now that we know the meanings of the words, let's move on to the explanation of the lines. So the poet says that once there was a little girl named Belinda who lived in a little white house. She lived with her pets, a black kitten, a gray mouse, a yellow dog and a dragon. The poet explains the name of all the animals that are tamed by Belinda. He says that the name of black kitten is Ink, the name of the grey mouse is Blink, the little yellow dog had yellow colour, so she calls him Mustard, and the dragon that was a coward called Custard. Simple, right? So looking at the poetic devices of lines 1 to 8, repetition is repeating the same word in the same line maybe twice maybe more than twice so here you have little little can you figure out in the second line yes it's little little it was for you to figure out moving further you have oxymoron and a realio trulio little pet dragon now a pet and a dragon aren't they two opposite things a pet you can have at home. Can you keep a dragon at home? It's not supposed to be there. This is just a fiction thing. So that's okay. So pet dragon, they are having opposite meanings. And that is the reason it is oxymoron. Anaphora. Anaphora is what? The lines beginning with the same word. Okay. So here you have and a uh, and a. Uh. Here you have and the uh, and the. Uh. So it is just at the beginning of the lines. Moving further, if you talk of simile, and the little yellow dog was sharp as mustard. So what is what are being compared here? The dog is being compared to the mustard, as mustard. It was yellowish in color, so it has been compared to the mustard plant. Now, simile means what? Which are the two words which will tell you that it is a comparison between two nouns and the usage of the words like or as you have any one of these two words and if there is a comparison it is simile if this as was not there then it would have been a metaphor again it is comparison between two nouns but without using the words like or as yes alliteration what is alliteration repetition of the first letter generally a consonant so if you look over here it's coward called Custard, C, C, C. We said no alliteration, Betty Butter Butter types. Yes, this is pertaining to that. So now, moving further to the next set of lines. Custard the dragon had big sharp teeth and spikes on top of him and scales underneath. What are spikes? You know, this thin pointed surface, you know, all around the body, they have those points, you know, like thorns types. Those are spikes. I'm sure you know what are spikes. You all keep spikes in your hair. The young, cool chaps, the dudes. And scales underneath. What are scales? These are thin bony plates protecting the skin of fish and reptiles. So if you see their skin is scaly. You know, it's just like that. There are scales over it. 
So you have them on the fish, you have them on the reptiles. Underneath is situated below or under. Mouth like a fireplace, chimney for a nose. And realio, trulio, daggers on his toes. What are daggers? It's a sharp knife. So you know his toes. I mean, you know what's a dragon, right? Belinda was as brave as a barrel full of bears. Barrel is a drum. Okay, it's a drum. And ink and bling chased lions down the stairs. Mustard was as brave as a tiger in a rage. But custard cried for a nice safe cage. So you see, you have, uh, yeah, rage is anger or furious. You're very, very angry when the tiger is in a rage, when the tiger is very angry. So these are the meanings to your words. Let's move further towards the explanation of lines 9 to 16. The dragon is described as a creature with big sharp teeth and spikes on top. He has scales to protect its skin. His mouth has been compared to a fireplace. Why? Because it is assumed that dragons can release fire from the mouth. We've seen it in movies, haven't we? They, when they do that, you know, when they're angry, when they're chasing, they release fire from the mouth. That is the reason it's called a fireplace. His nose is compared to a chimney which is used to pass out smoke. So when he is breathing out fire, there is smoke coming from the nose. His feet are like a sharp knife. You have those paws of his, they have, you know, they're like a knife, they can tear you apart. The poet explains the inner strength or the bravery of various characters of the poem. He is talking about how brave they can be. He says that Belinda was as brave as a group of bears and Ink and Blink were so brave that they could hunt lions. Ink and Blink are who? The cat and the dog. Right? Now, <clears throat> the bravery of the kitten and the little mouse is shown by pointing that they could hunt even a lion. Wow, they are that brave. The dog was brave just like an angry tiger. In contrast to all of them was Custard. He was absolutely opposite. Now, these guys were really very brave. You can see they were just like the angry tiger. They could hunt lions. They were that brave. But exactly opposite was Custard the dragon. Custard the dragon was not brave. He was so afraid of everything that he always demanded a safe cage. He wanted to stay in a cage always so that he knew he's going to be safe there. So he always looked for that cage to stay. That scary he was, that like a coward he was. Now, talking of the poetic devices of 9 to 16, you have simile. Now, before I move, can you see? Read your lines, look for the words like and as, and those are your similes. So mouth like a fireplace, brave as a barrel of uh, full of bears, brave as a tiger in a rage. So it, the comparison is coming with the words like and as. Refrain. Now here, realio, trulio, daggers on his toes. Now refrain is something, uh, you know, it is just being changed just to give it a, you know, a style. So basically the words are real and true. But this is a fancy language of a poem. So refrain. Mouth like a fireplace, chimney for a nose. Now just watch here. Mouth like a fireplace. Simply, can we say it? Because the mouth is being compared to a fireplace with the word like. Watch this. Chimney for a nose. So the chimney, the nose has been compared to chimney. But here we don't have the words like or as. That is why it is metaphor. I told you right in the beginning, didn't I? Yes. So chimney for a nose is a metaphor. Comparison without the words like and as. Alliteration, burr, burr, burr. The B sound. Belinda, brave, barrel, bears. Right? That's your alliteration. Assonance. Assonance is what? Repetition of the vowels. The vowel sound. Okay. Belinda was as brave as a barrel full of bears. A, A, A. The sound of A. Right. So that is your assonance. That's the repetition of the vowel sound. Moving further, we go ahead to the next set of lines. Belinda tickled him. She tickled him unmerciful. Tickled as in, you know, to tease, you tickle. 
unmerciful, very cruelly. You know, she would just keep tickling, not realizing how much, but she used to go on. Ink, blink and mustard, they rudely called him Percival. What is Percival? A Percival is a knight in King Arthur's court. So he, you know, they used to just make fun of him like sarcasm. They say, oh, he's Percival, a knight, a warrior in King Arthur's court. They all sat laughing in the little red wagon at the true, at the really old, truly old cowardly dragon. Belinda giggled till she shook the house and Blink said, weak, which is giggling for a mouse. Now, weak is the sound made, yeah, the sound made by the mouse. And giggling, we know, we laugh. You, you don't laugh with your mouth open, but very uh, small, short laugh, that's giggling. You hide your face and laugh. Ink and mustard rudely, rudely asked his age when custard cried for a nice safe cage. So what do these lines tell us? Lines 17 to 24. Belinda used to tease or tickle the dragon in a very cruel way. Ink, blink and mustard made fun of him by comparing him to a knight named Percival who was thought to be brave. In King Arthur's quote, he was thought to be brave but always ran away and lacked courage and bravery. So he was a knight, he was a warrior there uh, in King Arthur's court, but he was, I mean, people used to know, you know, he used to always run away. They thought that he was brave, but he would run away because he did not have the, he was not courageous and he was not even brave enough. So that is how they uh, were comparing that to uh, the dragon. So they used to tease the dragon while sitting in their little red wagon. The poet describes Belinda's laughter as loud, which echoed in the house. The way she would laugh out so loud, it would echo in the whole house. You could hear it wherever you were in the house. Blink the mouse used to laugh and make a sound of weak. And that's how uh, the mouse would laugh. Ink and mustard would tease him by asking the dragon his age. You know, they would ask him, oh, what's your age? Whenever he used to demand for a nice safe cage. Are you a baby? You're still looking for a cage. What is your age? So they used to tease him all the time whenever he did that. So coming to our poetic devices. Refrain, we did it previously also. Really or truly or fancy language of a poem. Yeah, we used for a poem. Uh, it, though it means something else. That means real and that means true. Repetition, tickled him, tickled him. You're the same words are being repeated in the same line, right? Allusion, ink, blink and mustard. They rudely called him Percival. Percival, now when you are using uh, the name of some person, you know, some celebrity, some famous character, when you're talking about some famous person, in that case, it is called allusion. So here they are using a proper noun, Percival, you know the name of that, uh, the, key, the knight in author's court. Now moving further to personification. Personification is they called him Percival. Whom did they call? The dragon. Now dragon is not a human. He is being given a name of a human, the quality of a human. They called him Percival, right? So there it is personification. Onomatopoeia, the sound. Remember, giggled, weak, giggling. These are the actual sounds that are produced like bow, wow, meow. Those, those are onomatopoeia. Clear with it? I'm sure you are by now. Come on, it's very simple. We have been repeating it from, I mean, so many poems by now. And towards the last set in this module, Suddenly, suddenly they heard a nasty sound, nasty as in unpleasant and mustard growled and they all looked around, growled as in he barked. Meowch cried Ink and Oo cried Belinda for there was a pirate climbing in the window. Pirate is a person who robs ships in the sea. Yeah, those are pirates but he had come to their house. Winda is, it is used for window. I told you, it's a very poetic language. Pistol in his left hand, pistol in his right. Pistol is a handgun. You know, you have that handgun. And he held in his teeth a cutlass bright. What is that? A short sword with a curved blade. It's a short, very short sword. So it, he was carrying that in his, uh, in his teeth. His beard was black. One leg was wood. 
he didn't even have both i mean one leg was an artificial leg it was clear that the pirate meant no good now it showed very clearly that he has come for something wrong definitely nothing good so let's see to the explanation of these lines as everyone was making fun of custard now while they were all enjoying and you know making fun of the dragon suddenly they heard a sound of someone entering the house from where was he entering from the window they looked towards the window and they saw a pirate a person who robs the ships in the sea climbing up the wall the dog barked at him the kitten meowed to him belinda cried out loud as everyone was scared of the pirate approaching them now suddenly someone just starts coming to you and you know uh, with a handgun and you know with that blade and the sword and everything obviously you're going to be scared so they all reacted the poet describes the pirate who was holding handguns in both his hands these guys generally do it that way in both his hands and had a little sword too in his teeth he was holding his sword with his teeth and had a black beard one of his leg was made of wood he frightened everyone and intended to harm them he definitely frightened them all and obviously he meant he was going to do something wrong he was there intending to harm them now talking of the poetic devices of lines 25 and 32 so here you have the repetition of the same word in the same line so it is repetition suddenly suddenly now if you look at this line can you think of one more figure of speech that can happen here suddenly suddenly the sir sir and the sound what is that repetition of the first letter very good alliteration you can come up with your own as well it can be multiple figures of speech in the same line so you need to guess whichever one you can get right you will definitely go for it onomatopoeia we spoke of the sounds onomatopoeia are the sounds so mustard growl you know he growled meowch cried ink so here you have the sound of the cat and ooh cried belinda she made that sound so here you have the sounds and that's the reason it is onomatopoeia now imagery imagery is what you are imagining imagery is you are imagining the images you are using your senses so when we are reading this you are automatically that scene is going on in your mind and that's the reason it is an imagery pistol in his left hand pistol in his right and he held in his teeth a cutlass bright his beard was black and one leg was wood so you see here all the descriptions are given to us the color is given to us here it is descriptive mode and that's the reason this description is making you imagine those scenes yeah that's the reason it is imagery so here we are we are going to stop here this is what it is all about lines 1 to 32 switch over to the next module for the remaining lines 33 to 62 and so here we are to the final the third module which consists of the explanations of lines 33 to 62 so let's move on belinda paled and she cried help help paled as in she turned yellow due to fear she was scared you know suddenly when someone attacks you become pale you lose the blood from your face but mustard fled with a terrified yelp He just ran. He gave a short, sharp cry, and he just ran away. Mustered the dog. Ink trickled down to the bottom of the household. Ink, the cat, she trickled down to the bottom of the household. You run away, and little mouse blink strategically. Mouse hold strategically, as in planned. He had a hole, his own, uh, you know, the mouse hole where he would go and hide. So he had planned it and kept it, and he went and hid over there. But. up jumped custard snorting like an engine now you remember the pirate had come and all these people just run away and it's only custard who is actually the coward one who is considered the coward everyone makes fun of him so it was basically he who jumped up snorting like an engine snorting means you make a sudden explosive sound through one's nose you made that sound clashed his tail like irons in a dungeon 
clashed as in you fought you know you hit your tail behind like in an underground prison you know that sound of the chains it comes that way sound started coming with a clatter and a clank and a jangling squirm clatter and clank are the sound of the hard objects falling you know when you drop something that and the noise comes that's clatter or clank Jangling squirm is sound of the hard object falling on each other. They are, you know, going on falling on each other. That is jangling squirm. He went at the pirate like a robin at a worm. He's the robin like a bird. How a robin goes to the uh, worm, you know, the bird. It goes to the worm exactly in the same manner. The dragon went towards the pirate just to get his prey. Now, what do you mean by these lines? Everyone was frightened as they saw the pirate. Belinda turned yellow due to fear and she started crying for help. Mustard started crying for help too. And the kitten ran down towards the bottom of the house as if he had already planned for it. The mouse hid himself in his little mouse hole to save himself. All of them just scattered away. All the other characters that were earlier defined as brave. You remember, they could hunt lions. They were as brave as the tiger. That's how they were. So they were defined as brave, were terrified. But the dragon did the most unexpected thing. Something which was totally not expected out of him. He did exactly that. He jumped onto the pirate and made a strong sound with his nose as if an engine was producing a sound. He made such a uh, you know, loud sound from his nose that as though the engine is making that sound that way. He hit his tail on the ground with great force and it produced a heavy sound of metal being rubbed against each other in the underground prisons. So, you know, you, if you have two metallic things and you rub it against each other, you know what kind of sound comes? That way the sound started coming when he started hitting the tail. He attacked the pirate just like a robin bird that attacks the worms. He exactly attacked the pirate in the same manner. So, looking at your poetic devices for the lines 33 to 40. Repetition is help, help. The same word is being repeated in the same line. Simile, again. Quickly, come on, there are a lot of similes in this poem. You have the words, which are the two words? Like and as. And you have comparisons. Up jumped custard, snorting like an engine, tail like irons, and the it went at the pirate like a robin at a worm. So the, you know, the dragon is being compared to a robin right so like a uh, so you have these comparisons between two nouns using the words like we are talking of none other than simile onomatopoeia sounds see the pronunciation of this is so vague that it's the sound so you know just connect that onomatopoeia to that sound clatter clank jangling squirm these are all the sounds produced you know when the two metallic things rub against each other Imagery, imagination, images, keywords, use the keywords, come on. So here, now while I will read this, you can automatically visualize this. But up jumped custard, snorting like an engine, clashed his tail like irons in a dungeon. So what he did was, we are imagining, we are using our senses, so it is imagery, right? Good one. Let's move further to the next set of lines. The pirate gaped at Belinda's dragon and gulped some grog from his pocket flagon. What do you mean by gaped? You stared, you know, with, with, a, with your mouth wide open like, you know, that's gaped. Yeah. See, there's one, uh, I mean, being English vocabulary, gaped is, you know, when you're, and gasped, G-A-S-P-E-D. You know, when you do that, that's gasped. Gaped is when you're doing that. So that's the difference between two. All this is useful for your creative, so I'm explaining it to you. Gulped. What did he gulp? He swallowed some grog. What is a grog? A drink. From his pocket flagon, a container made of silver in which drink is stored. So, he did that. 
The pirate gaped at Belinda's dragon. He looked at him with a mouth wide open and gulped some grog from his pocket flagon. The moment he looked at that fellow, uh, when he saw the dragon, he quickly swallowed some drink which was there in the pocket flagon. Flagon is a container which is made of silver in which they store the drink. So he took that out and he immediately drank it. Quite often we see that, you know, when you, you can, I'm mean, sure you must have come across this in movies. He fired two bullets, but they didn't hit. And Custer gobbled him every bit. Gobbled as in swallowed him hurriedly, just ate him up fully. Not a bit of him was left. Belinda embraced him. She went and she really hugged him tight. Mustard licked him. No one mourned for his pirate victim. No one mourned, no one cried over the sufferer. Who was the sufferer? The pirate. He was the victim. He had got killed, right? Ink and blink in glee did gyrate. Glee means delight. They were happy. And gyrate means they danced. Both of them came dancing and they were really happy around the dragon that ate the pirate. They came and they started dancing there. And you know, because he saved all of them, so they were very happy with him for once. So here you go, 41 to 48. The pirate was shocked by the dragon's reaction. To gain some strength, he drank some alcohol from a container in his pocket. The moment he saw the dragon, he was shocked to see, like, oh my God, that's a dragon in front of me. After gathering some courage, he fired two bullets on the dragon, but missed it. He was so nervous. He tried shooting, you know, he had both those guns. He tried shooting, but he missed uh, shooting him. Custer, the dragon, ate every bit of this fierce looking pirate. He was a scary pirate. He just ate him up totally. The pirate died. Belinda hugged Custard and Mustard licked him. No one felt sad for the death of the pirate. Nobody was because they were so scared of him. In fact, they had got saved. Ink and Blink ran around the dragon in happiness. They went around. They were all very happy. The poet describes the happiness of all the characters and show the portrayal of gratitude of everyone towards Custard. All of them were grateful to Custard. They were very happy with him. So they were expressing their gratitude, their thanks. They were very happy because they had got saved. Now talking about the poetic devices of lines 41 to 48. Alliteration, repetition of the first letter. Can you see any word being repeated? If a word was repeated, what would it be? Repetition. But this is alliteration. So what is it? It's the sound of the first letter. So it is gulped, grog, glee, gyrate, g. It's the consonant sound, right? The very first letter. Imagery, what are the keywords? Come on. Imagination, images, senses. You use, you're using your senses. So while I'm reading this, you are, it's visual, it, that thing is being visualized in your mind. The pirate gaped at Belinda's dragon and gulped some grog from his pocket flagon. So it's happening. That scene was happening and you're imagining it. So it's imagery. Assonance is what? Repetition of the vowel sound. So see, it's very clearly given to you. No one moaned for O, O, O. It's the use of the vowel sound O. Ink and blink in glee did. So you see the I, 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 right? It's a repetition of the vowel sound I. That ate the pirate. It is the use of the vowel sound A, right? So this is how it is assonance, right? Repetition of the vowel sound. Coming towards the last two stanzas of your poem. But presently up spoke little dog mustard. I'd have been twice as brave if I hadn't been flustered. Flustered as an upset or confused. And up spoke ink and up spoke blink. We'd have been there three times as brave, we think. And Custard said, I quite agree that everybody is braver than me. Now, just so humble the Custard is, the dragon is. So, he has saved everybody and yet he's telling all of them that, yes, I agree that all of you are braver than me. You think you should say that? They ran away when they were supposed to be there. Belinda still lives in her little white house with her little black kitten and her little grey mouse. 
and her little yellow dog and her little red wagon and her realio trulio little pet dragon. Belinda is as brave as a barrel full of bears and ink and bling chase lions down the stairs. Mustard is as brave as a tiger in a rage but custard keeps crying for a nice safe cage. So if you remember, if you really concentrated, this is your stanza one. It's, I haven't repeated it. It is there in the poem. The whole thing has been repeated. It's uh, the repetition of the entire paragraph. Yes. So what are they telling you towards the last set of lines? Soon after they thanked and they showed their love towards custard, they changed their mind. How wicked, how cruel can you be now that you are safe? I mean, you thank the person and then again you're becoming mean. How they did that? They were reminded of how they used to make fun of this coward dragon. They say, oh, this is the dragon we make fun of. So that's it. We are supposed to do that. The dog exclaimed that it was because of some confusion that he wasn't able to do anything. Otherwise, he would have been twice as brave as Custard. He said, actually, the thing is, I got a little confused. I didn't know what to do at that point of time. So I just ran away or else I would have been twice as brave as him. Oh, now he's what? He's nothing. I would have been more brave than him. Ink and Blink also boasted. What did they, how did they boast? That they would have been three times braver than Custard. He says, oh, we, we would have been three times more braver than him. To this, the dragon said that he fully agreed to this, that all of them were more powerful and braver than him. They say, I totally agree. That point of time it happened, but I know otherwise that you guys are way more powerful and way more braver than me. So such a humble person. So, you know, what it's trying to really tell you is that you cannot go on the appearance. The main, the actually the true colors come when situations arise. The same thing happens with family and friends. This is just a poem. But if I symbolize this, the same thing happens with family and friends. You guys, I mean, we rather, all of us, we do have friends, but when, you know, you have certain situations that come into your life and nobody is there around you. They just run away. That's the reason it says a friend in need is a friend indeed. So when you really need a friend and your friend is there with you, that's a true friend. Otherwise, you need to filter your friends. Family is one such uh, what do I say? One unit or one bonding that is always there. You must have heard of this when, you know, it was it was mentioned that the person had maybe a thousand or, or fifteen hundred uh, Facebook friends. But when that person met with an accident and he was in the ICU, the only people outside the ICU was they were his family members. So family means everything. Of course, there are exceptional friends. I don't deny that. Even I have them. But yes, take care and filter them. Yes. So yeah, this is what he agreed. He says, yes, I agree. You guys are way more powerful and way more say, I mean, you know, uh, what do you say? Way more braver than me. So the poet used the same lines again to show that after this horrific episode in which the dragon was the hero, where all the other characters still undermined him by saying that they were way more powerful than him and could have handled the situation in a much better way. This is just out of our confusion. Otherwise, we would have handled this situation way much better than you. The poet says that life started again in the same manner. So after that episode, again, they were back to square one, just like they would keep teasing Custard. They kept doing the same. Belinda still lives in that white house with ink, blink, mustard and custard and all of them are very brave whereas the dragon is still a coward who always wants to stay safe in his cage. So that's where it really ends up. Okay. Now moving on to the poetic devices of your very last lines. 
alliteration ha ha hadn't have right the sound of the first letter and repetition very clearly up spoke up spoke the same words are being repeated in the same line yes see when you go through your poems you can also figure out some more figures of speech some more poetic devices see right now you know all your definitions you know the key words so go for it try doing some when you solve your you have a lot of practice also given in the notes in your uh, you know uh, in the practice uh, notes you have lots of comprehensions go for them try working on them and you can master your poetic devices i'm telling you that just go for it yeah so let's conclude this wonderful ballad wonderful poem come story courage is grace under pressure it's not about the dole shole not at all so it is grace under pressure so when the dragon was under pressure and he had all the courage though he was always a cowherd but at that point of time his presence of mind did wonders yes so keep your presence of mind always on the alert mode always stay alert any situation that comes up for anyone be it yourself be it your friends relatives neighbors anybody if you can do the needful kindly do so become that friend who is always there when in need yes so for such more interesting modules keep watching and keep learning